Adiós, inglés. I'm sorry. You will go on. I stay here. Gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Now, my metaphor might seem a trifle impertinent, but I think it's very much to the point. Which do you prefer, or should I say, which, which do you find more convenient, a wife or one of these mulatto girls? No, no, please don't misunderstand. I'm speaking strictly in terms of economics. What is the cost of the product? What does the product yield? The product in this case being love. Uh, purely physical love, since sentiments obviously play no part in economics. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> now, a wife must be provided with a home, with food, with uh, dresses, with medical attention, etc., etc. You're obliged to keep her a whole lifetime, even when she's grown old and perhaps a trifle unproductive. And then, of course, if you have the bad luck to survive her, you have to pay for the funeral. <laughs> no, no, it's true, is it? <laughs> Gentlemen, I know it seems amusing, but actually those are the facts, aren't they? Now, with a prostitute, on the other hand, it's quite a different matter, isn't it? You see, there's no need to, to lodge her or to feed her, certainly not to dress her or to bury her, thank God. She's yours only when you need her. You pay her only for that service, and you pay her by the hour. Which, gentlemen, is more important? and more convenient. A slave or a paid worker? Which do you find more convenient? Foreign domination with its laws, its vetoes, its taxes, its commercial monopolies or independence? With your own government, your own laws, your own administration and the freedom to trade with anyone you like. On terms that are dictated only by the prices on the international market. Not only for the freedom of trade, Mr. Walker. I believe that for many of us there are idealistic motives which are even more important. We are now a nation, a small nation, born here and forged with toil, with difficulty. It took more than three centuries. A nation which originated from Portugal, but now is not a part of Portugal anymore. And that no longer wants to be a Portuguese colony. That's all quite correct, my dear Teddy. We all agree on the idealistic motives. But uh, it's the example of the whole that doesn't convince me as yet, Mr. Walker. What will happen if once the Negro ceases to be a slave and instead of wanting to be a worker, wants to be the boss? That's exactly what will happen if we go on arguing about it. Four months ago, Jose Dolores was on the Sierra Madre with a few dozen men. Then he reached Sierra Trinidad with four or five hundred. Now there are thousands spreading through the lowlands. It is my view that if, if you don't take immediate action, if you don't weave yourselves into this revolt, you'll be swept away. And then your ex-slaves, instead of becoming your workers, will not become your bosses, Mr. Prada, but your executioners. Now, what are my interests in the matter, and who am I? Very simply, I represent Her Britannic Majesty, a British agent, if you prefer. But actually, you know, England wants the same thing that you want, the freedom of trade, and therefore an end of foreign domination in all that in America. But what England does not want, however, and what I think you yourselves do not want, are these revolutions carried to their extreme consequences. Men like Jose Dolores and Toussaint Louverture are perhaps necessary to ignite a situation, but then after that they become very dangerous, as in Haiti, for example. Yes, he certainly has got a point there. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, as you can see, I, I think our interests coincide, at least for the moment, and they also coincide with progress and civilization. And for those who believe in it, it's important.
And you, do you believe in it, Mr. Walker? Yes, Mr. Prada, I do. be able to go through with it, Sir William. Well, it always seems that way the first time, but uh, we'll see. It's, uh, it's actually rather simple. It's only a moment. Very simple moment, and then it's over. Come on. 